Good evening everyone, welcome back to Tom Play's Bannerlord for Absolute Beginners. We're just uh, heading back towards Batanian lands and really to get our renown up so any quests we can do, any um Oh, you see, here's one that might actually be useful for our new companion. Hey, so who are you then? So I wouldn't normally do this one. Nope. Okay. Right, he can't do it because he needs athletics. So maybe this is a good one, good time to talk about trade. So trade is fairly standard. You buy things in places where they're cheap and you take them somewhere where they're expensive and sell them. So this place specializes in silver ore, which is a good choice at the moment because we've got quite a small party so we can't carry very much. So if I just buy a couple of silver ores for 89, and we're basically just going to have to remember that it was 89, and hopefully find somewhere we can sell it for more than 89. Normally I buy things in villages and sell them in cities. You could do it the other way around. You can buy things in cities and sell them in other cities. A certain areas tend to be better for certain things. Taking a round trip through the lands of Yazarai can be a great place to pick up dates. Right, so we're probably going to struggle to enter this city because there's someone currently besieging it. So not really our problem, but it doesn't mean that it's a city we can't currently access. Just a minor nuisance. Check the quest here, this place specializes in iron. Like an iron mine. Tremendously keen to do that one because it's not something our companion is desperately suited for, and it would mean coming all the way back out here to hand them over. So let's just speed up. An extremely small group of looters there, not sure if we'll be able to catch them. We might be able to because we're in the woods. And of course, we're on easy mode. Yeah, what is it now? Right, so you get this when you vastly overpower someone. You can actually have them join your group. But it usually isn't worth it, I don't think. So they've actually just given up without a fight. So we'll just take them as prisoners and take some fish. So let's head down to Legator. Currently Western Empire. Army of Poachers, right, we've done that one before. Let's run some our prisoners. Speak to Noriga. Peace to you, stranger. Though, if you come any closer, I may stick a knife in your belly, as one cannot be too careful these days. <laughs> okay, so he's a Kuzate, and they are... They were originally nomads, and they're starting to settle. 
sounds like this guy's family was victimised for trying to stick to the nomadic lifestyle. So be sympathetic. So yeah, and I'm not hugely keen because the Kuzate's quite a long way away from us. So let's see has some very specific skills that we need. Speaking of, let's sell all of this stuff. So I'm going to try holding off on the silver ore this time. Do it as a separate trade. And we gain free skill points. So it is worth doing trading stuff separately. I think last time I did them all together and I didn't gain any skill points in trade. So yeah, it's worth um, holding off. But yeah, basically we bought them for 89, we sold them for 120 yards. Gave us free skill points in trade. There are some advantages we will start to get as we gain perks in trade. So it's worth doing now and again. Arena is of course currently closed. Head up to Maranuth. Okay, there's actually a hide out there. Which is interesting because I've been wanting to do one. Ah, and we've actually got a quest for it, which is fantastic. Okay. Oi, sorry, I don't think I know you. Let's do it ourselves. Now, it's sometimes possible to get multiple quests of the same hideout. So let's just see if these guys want help with bandits because at this stage, help with bandits, you do enough just to take out the hideout. Nope, they need draft animals. Okay, right, well, I'll leave them for now. You have to wait until nightfall for these. Can be a good way to get your energy back up after doing a lot of smithing, which we will cover later. Okay, so apparently Felonos has managed to get himself injured. So I might just take the archers. So okay, this is a, um, a hideout thing. You don't get... Sorry. <laughs> just messing with my shield. You don't get any um, chance to lay your troops out. The idea is that you're sneaking in at, at dusk or at night, potentially, but certainly when it's getting a bit darker. And we're trying to take them by surprise. Might do it properly later, as you're expected to do it, but under the circumstances, given I've just brought archers. I might just tell the archers to start firing at everyone from a distance, which technically loses the element of surprise, but can be quite effective. So, by default, we've only got one group, and they are not allowed to fire, so we have to press F4, which tells everyone to fire at will. And then I'm going to just tell them to charge, so that's F1 and F3. And they should just move in and start shooting at everyone. And I think that will probably be enough to clear it, so they probably don't even need us. But I'm going to stay with them just in case. The reason I would often do it this way is that... 
in the ending of this mission, we will have to face a bandit chief. And you get the option to take the bandit chief on one-on-one. -on -one. Which is a lot easier to do if you're personally uninjured. So if you can get... If you can clear the current set of enemies with your troops without getting injured yourself, you can then just take the bandit chief on one on one. So it's actually quite a nice way to do it. So normally if I was doing it this way I wouldn't even bother following them, I would just leave it and go somewhere else. Just, just you know, make a cup of tea or something while they clear things up. Because the game does pause for the bandit chief. Come on. Yeah, I don't think it's how you're supposed to do it. It's not how you're taught to do it in the tutorial. Everyone sort of uses melee. One thing we can do. Hang on. Movement. Follow me. So this is actually how you're told to do it, is to get them to follow you. This can actually be useful because if your troops get scattered, you can use follow me to get them all to bunch together and then tell them to charge again. F1, F3. So yeah, F1 for movement, F2 for follow me. will get them to group around you. Which can be handy to make sure they don't get themselves too separated out. But effectively bringing archers here can actually work out quite well. So in some ways engage might make more sense than charge. So I shouldn't really have done that. Is that it? That is it. So here's the bandit chief. He only has three people with him. So, arguably, we would have the advantage if we just, uh, hang on, let's move there. If we just took him on and went with I don't fight duels with brigands. But because we're on easy mode, we should be able to easily defeat him one on one anyway. What you tend to find later on is that they come with like a pretty decent number of men. So defeating them one on one can save you from some serious troop losses. So I do often like to do that, sort of divide it all up. Often get better loot from bandit from uh, bandit bases. I wonder about Felinus the Robber. He actually is a pretty good archer, so I'm wondering whether to put him in charge of one of the archer groups. So these things, banners, as you'd guess, are quite important in a game called Banner Lord. Basically, when someone is leading a group, they give pretty much everyone in that group an advantage, in this case, increased range damage. So I'm going to equip it on him, and if we put him in charge of a group of archers, they should get increased rage damage. Which would be helpful. His sword may be better than what he's got, simply because what he's got is rusty. Even though what he's got is a higher weapon tier. And I think we might want the guarded arm wraps. No, we don't. Okay. Let's give them to him as well. Yeah, that should be everything. Maybe check civilian outfits. Oh, yeah. Fine arm wraps. Cool. So gained a lot of charm. We're defeating a bandit base. And we've gained skill in leadership. So we can either have combat trips, tips, 
It's plus two experience per day to all troops in party. Or raise the meek, which is specifically for low tier troops. And also there's a governor one if you're doing a governed settlement. So certainly for our guy, we definitely want combat tips. Tempted to say combat tips for everyone, really. But the garrison advantage, I suppose, could be useful for one of our subordinates. Right, let's see what this guy wants. Oi, sorry, I don't think I know you. Right, so he basically needs sumpter horses. to be fair. So you'd have to buy them from a place that specialises in horses, which there are a few of, north of this lake I think, a couple of at least, or you can get them from a city. So we'll see. I should probably have checked how much he was going to charge us actually. A little nervous about attacking them because there's going to be a total number of 26. Price to raw materials at Marinoff. Not very keen on these. They tend to get you into trouble with somebody else. So I don't think I'll bother. Just run some prisoners. I think we've already met him. How are we for troops? Oh! I wonder if our stewards gone up. We seem to be able to have a few more. Right, I'll at least ask for two more. And we'll sell these things. And we'll see Sumter Horses are 98 here. Not sure how good that is. Might want to try one of the places, one of the villages. And there's a tournament, so let's join in. Rugged scale armor, sounds good. So these mostly the main thing, although we do need the equipment, I'm mostly thinking plus three renown, which we seem to get for the tournament. Because I want to get our clan rank up. Okay, so we're in a group this time. Group of two, looks like Felinos isn't joining in, but there is this other guy. You will have to watch out for. And it looks like we're on two handed. And I think he might be quite skilled. I wonder if he's the other noble. Yep, completely lost. That's embarrassing. Yeah, he is. So, to be fair, we were facing someone who was probably far better equipped than we were. Yes! So I think we may as well leave the tournament at this point. Never mind. It was worth a try. I do usually quite like the two-handed ones because they tend to be quite easy. But in that case, I think it was my first time using a two-handed weapon and I went up against a noble who probably has rather better weaponry and armour. We got no quarrel with you. Okay, well, this should be very easy. Under my command! Yep. Right, let's head up. Right, so we definitely don't want to be where we are. What we want to do is... Right, we're going to move Felonos to be in charge of archers instead. And I'm going to move them all onto this hill. Archers, forward! Move! 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 Forward! 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 Trying to get them all in the line. And then the infantry can go there. Right, so I'm going to use an F2 command. F2 command is formation, and I'm going to tell them to form a shield wall. Then let's go. 
So you see they are more tightly packed together now. And they've got their shields up. So I'm probably going to tell them to start moving towards the enemy. So F1 and F4. Move to enemy! Yeah, that was supposed to be just the shield wall. Apparently I forgot that. Never mind. Probably doesn't matter to be honest. there wasn't much to it and we were given a, a nice big hill. Right, I'm going to start making some wood runners now. Even though I'll probably have them all in the same group for the time being. Is there anything particularly good here? A tailored commoner shirt. Might be better overall, to be fair, and he could use a hood on his civilian gear. Right, okay, there's a quest over here. I didn't take that uh, poacher's quest, did I? Right, I hate these, so I'm not going to take it. Uh, is it worth getting some grain? Not really, it costs 16. So I think I will leave that and just drop in at Sionan. Special weapon order, that's to do with smithing, which we haven't done. We've met him. grain anyway. Could probably have checked the horse prices. Not to worry. Train troops. Don't think that's an option. Some horses still 97. Right, they're not getting any cheaper. So I'm going to buy them at 97. And head back so I don't forget about this quest. hand we could attack these mountain bandits while we're at it. Might just send troops to this one, there are so few of them. Yeah, so we didn't lose anyone. It didn't really seem worth playing that one out. any better and I think he has one already so that's fine it's been a while there we go Looks like someone's raiding this village. That's what this symbol means. That's one of the things you can do if you want to play that way, but you definitely be in the bad guy territory if you do that. Probably give you some uh, benefits in the roguery skill.
See, this group's so small that we're having trouble actually catching them. Mess with us, and we'll sell our lives dearly. Okay, let's find out. On my orders! Alright. What are we dealing with? Well, among other things, apparently I can't go any further back. Which is odd. Okay. Fairly narrow stretch of land then. It does seem to go up a bit here. And here. So, might be worth... Oh. Worth putting arches there, maybe. Uh, maybe just back here. And I'll just put the infantry in front. Let's just do that. It's fine. Not much of an opportunity to be tactical when the groups we're facing are so small. I'll just tell our guys to charge and I will do likewise. Arrow pointing up so I can head straight at them. And hopefully that'll be sufficient. Looks like I once again told everyone to charge. Not doing a very good demonstration of how to do the tactics correctly. Not to worry. Okay, gained a level, so... What options do we have? Quite a few. Might put another focus point into leadership, which should make us learn it a little faster as well. I do want to focus on the... bottom three sets of skills where possible. These manual laborers have a feeling... Oi, sorry, I don't think I know you. This is one they had before, but... Oh, but now we can do it. Okay. Right, so I'm going to assign him to take this on. You can't send tier 1 troops. Is the only thing. I'm going to actually send him with a load of archers. To deal with this. So in the meantime, we need to remember that we have only 10 troops now. So we need to be very careful about whom we uh, take on in combat. Hey, I don't think I know you. Peace to you, stranger. So I think this is a battalion. I think she's a, yeah, she's a healer. And victim of extreme tragedy. I'm going to be sympathetic. So I doubt she's actually someone I'm going to want because she's primarily healer again. But we will keep her in mind anyway. You never know, it might turn out she has some abilities. Oh, and we are now... Looks like we've got a high enough riding skill to ride the Batanian hobby. So let's trade our horse. And we now have a spare Sumter horse. Brilliant. Should find personal combat a little easier now anyway. And we've got another tournament to join. Reinforced padding mittens. So that would be great if we could win them. It'd be great for the renown. It'd be great for the equipment. 
Right, so part of a big group. I think this is Empire style. So let's skip this one. We're in the blue team. And it looks like we are horse and lass. Which is good. Because in theory, we're quite good at this. Let's try and help the infantry a bit. and they can help us against the horsemen. Do I have a sword? I do. So I could also try and hem one of these guys in. And just take him down with the sword. And if we hem them in enough, then the infantry can join in and help as well. Always fantastic. Yeah, I think we've got this one in the bag. Even with my extremely dodgy combat skills. Okay, so we've got another one we can skip, so this time we're on our own. Which is always good, so it's worth backing out, if we can. <laughs> the coward's way. You don't get any penalties for doing this, I don't think. You don't even seek to lose your reputation with bravery. So hopefully these guys will weaken each other, and then we can fight whoever wins, but they'll already be injured. So this technically counts as tactics. Hey up. Okay, skip that one. And now it's one on one. shields will eventually die, so we want to be on the offensive if we can. Obviously use the shields, but um, yeah, you don't want to be uh, favouring the shields. A lot of the time when they attack, if you're attacking you will hit them as well, so... But even if you just hit the shield, eventually their shield will collapse. Okay. There are other moves you can make. But hey, we're on easy mode. So she gives a nice free renown, and we've also got some better equipment, which is brilliant. this and sell the existing ones. So gain some skills because of all the fighting. Okay, so we've got Basher, which is good if you're going to use shield bashes, which we haven't actually used. And it's good for protecting shields when you're in command. But wrapped handles just gives you more general skill. So I think it's more universally applicable, no matter how we decide to do things. So I tend to go for that one. Athletics, we have speed, which isn't necessarily an advantage. Or well-built, which gives us more hit points, which is always an advantage. So well-built sounds good to me. See these tools again. Not particularly object well, to that good one. Day to you. So, who might you be? He's polite. Let's 
check the number. Just one. And it's 140 again. And I wonder, this is salt? I wonder if it's worth buying a bit of salt. Maybe just get a couple. We are over encumbered right now. I think because we've sent most of our troops away. So we're going to be moving very slowly. But yeah, I've got a couple of salts. So they cost us 39. So we just need to find anywhere that will buy them for more than 39. this city of course check tools right we can actually buy these for exactly 140 so I'm gonna do that because while we're not gonna gain any money we will fulfill the mission and we don't have to travel too far afield and then come back I think it's worth it. So over here is actually the lands of Yazarai. Not planning to go that way. So I'm hoping that we will get a sudden increase in the number of troops we can have and I want to get a lot of Britannian infantry. Uh, train troops? I don't think we'll be able to do Aye. that. So who are you then? Oh, actually, we probably could because we've sent a bunch of troops away, but then everyone will start deserting when they come back. So I think this is a one non Azurai place you can get dates, but I'm not sure the price will be very good. So I might not actually buy any. What to deal with brigands? Probably not right now. I don't know, how many groups does he want dealing with, hey, I wonder? So who are you then? Just two. I suppose we could try it. It's a 71. I mean, to me that seems very expensive. Okay, let's go see if we can take on more troops than we have. Well, they're running away from us, which is a good sign. There's a smaller number of troops. One thing I had forgotten, however, is that of course we're massively encumbered, so we're not going to be able to catch anybody. So, yeah, that was a mistake. Unless one of them comes to attack us. Oh, this might do it, though. Bandit base. Hey, so who are you then? Bandit base may actually be close enough to count under the dealing with brigands. You can sometimes get a situation where you get a mission for a bandit base in the city, you get help deal with brigands, and you also get a bandit base mission from a village. I suppose we should probably just check this city to make sure there isn't one for it there. Has arrived, declared war on the Kazates. Is he new? Ah, wine here tastes like piss. Anyway, what do you want? Yep, he's new. He'll just the hyena. This is usually what happens when you've already met someone with the same nickname. Alright, I see. So apparently he's a full-on killer. Not a particularly... Nice guy, and we don't have any missions for 
bandits the arena's closed because it's night time let's just go to the hideout and deal with it I think we've got just enough people to take on a hideout Uh, yeah, just about. Okay, so let's deal with this one a bit more like the tutorial tells you. So they sort of do it as a follow option. So we do F1 and then F2. Follow me. And I think the idea is that we sneak up on everyone. And attack them before they're ready. Someone up here. Die, you bastards! So ideally we still don't want to take any damage, but... Could of course tell them to charge at any time. I suppose the idea here is that we control the pace, we're sneaking up on people a bit, and we know at all times that we've got a whole bunch of friendly troops at our back. Although I can't say they seem to be doing very much. Well, maybe that's because we've only been facing one person at a time. But yeah, like a lot of these guys have got ranged weapons. So we're denying them the opportunity to use them by attacking them this way. Oh, here we go. Fair enough, so shields up. To hell with you! Okay. So you can see that we're dealing with people as the power bar goes down, the light green in their case. So once that goes to zero, the bandit chief will appear. Well, these are basically set pieces, there are a few of them. Else are raising our skill in athletics and one handed. Oh, there he is. There we go. I think that's it. So we've got slightly more men this time. We could still do the single combat. I'm not that badly injured. So I might actually go for it. Really, because we have been taking part, we should have uh, said we don't do duels with bandits. And you may have to do that anyway if you're not playing on easy mode. But as it is, got a tremendous advantage, so why risk losing anyone? Pupil and Seven renowned for this one. Right, so I'm going to make the volunteers woodrunners again. And I suppose if we're tier three, the woodrunners should be becoming someone. So we have two options for tier three raiders and skirmishers. Um, I'm going to go with skirmisher for this one. And we'll sort of discuss the difference later. 
Okay, we've got a tier 5 weapon. It's rusty. So I'm slightly questioning whether it's worth it. It seems to be worse in every respect except for length. Yeah, don't think I'm keen. Got some arrows though, which is interesting because we really ought to be giving um, our companion a bow and arrow. Seeing as we have him in charge of the archers. Yes, yeah, so that counted as two gangs of brigands. I think it counts as maybe four. Are you guys coming for us? No, I didn't think so. Right, so where are we up to? Uh, do we have a clan rank thing? Oh, clan tier, which is zero. But we should have it in a quest to establish a clan. Yeah, so our Renown is now 42, so we're quite close. We should get Renown when he finishes his quest as well. So that's pretty good. And they're almost back with us. So not far to go. Hopefully we're moving on to the next stage of the story and getting a lot more infantry next time. So I might stop there anyway. It wasn't too bad. Got to do two bandit bases in completely different ways. Which was nice. Shame the combats weren't <laughs> very interesting, but um, hopefully once the clan rank goes up, our combat should start getting more interesting anyway. So I will leave it there for now. And yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.